The gospel text of today is taken from the gospel of Luke chapter 5 verses 17 to 26 and contains the story of the healing of a paralyzed man. There are a number of points in the story that we can take for our own reflection even as we live in these times of the COVID-19 pandemic. The story begins by telling us that some friends of the paralytic brought the paralyzed man on a stretcher. They knew that Jesus had the power to heal and so they brought him to be healed by Jesus. However, there was such a large crowd and the crowd was even blocking the door that the men who carried the paralyzed man could not make headway through the crowd. However, they did not give up. They persevered and not only did they persevere in an oral or verbal faith, they persevered in a very practical faith which not only showed itself in action, it showed itself in creative action. Because there was no room at the door, the men carried the paralyzed man to the roof of the house, removed the tiles that covered the house and let the paralyzed man down on his stretcher through the tiles which they had removed. Jesus was impressed with their faith. And Jesus saw this as a persevering faith. And the first thing that Jesus did was he went to the root of this man's challenge. That is his heart. And he said to him, your sins are forgiven. Why did Jesus forgive the man's sins before healing him physically? For two reasons. First, because Jesus is aware that every of our external ailments stems primarily from within. It stems from the heart and it stems from the mind. When there is unforgiveness in the heart, when there is tension and anxiety in the mind, this manifests itself in external ailments. Any doctor or psychologist worth his or her salt will tell you today that the larger majority of our ailments are psychosomatic. And psychosomatic means that the ailments begin in the mind or in the heart. So whether it is unforgiveness, whether it is anxiety, whether it is useless worry, whether it is tension or frustration or any of these negatives, they have a tendency to show them in the soma that is in the body. And that is why these ailments are called psychosomatic. So Jesus goes to the root of this man, he goes to the heart of this man, he goes to the mind of this man, and he forgives the man of all of his ailments, of all of his sins. There are some religious leaders, however, who cannot accept this. And the reason why they cannot accept it is because forgiveness of sins is reserved only for God. Human beings do not have the authority to forgive sins. Human beings cannot forgive sins. It is God alone who forgives sins and in this they are correct. So they make an allegation against Jesus. They are upset with Jesus because Jesus has taken on now the role of God and forgiven this man's sins. So they accuse Jesus of being a blasphemer. They accuse Jesus of not doing what is right. And in order to show that Jesus has the authority to forgive sins, he does what for Jesus is the less difficult thing to do, namely to tell the man to get up from his paralyzed mat and to walk. And the man 
obeys the commands of Jesus to the letter. Jesus says, I say to you, rise, take up your mat and walk. And we are told the man rose, took up his mat and walked. The man who could not carry himself now carries himself and his mat because of his encounter with Jesus. What are the lessons that we can learn from this beautiful miracle story? The first lesson is this, that of perseverance. The men who carried the paralyzed man could have said to themselves, there is such a large crowd, they are blocking the door, it is not possible for us to enter, and so what we will do is, we will come another day, we will come later, we will come tomorrow. However, for them, there was no later, there was no after, there was no tomorrow, there was only the now. And because there was only the now, they persevered, they persisted. However, their persistence and their perseverance was not an empty perseverance was not merely hard work it was also creative work because they knew that there was no possibility of the crowd dispersing what they did was they tried another way they tried an alternative they went up to the roof and so we tend to give up when things do not go the way we plan or when things do not go the way we want them to go and we say there is no way. There is always, there is always a way. These friends of the paralytic have shown that there was another way. That is, they went to the roof. They were creative. They were original they went to the roof, removed the tiles, and then their faith was shown in action and in creativity. This is what we require at this challenging time. We require both perseverance, persistence, and we require creativity. It is very likely that some of us are tired some of us are on the verge of giving in. Some of us are on the verge of giving up. This miracle is saying to us, do not do that. Keep on keeping on. Perseverance is the key. Persistence is the key. And if we are persevering and persistence, the originality and the creativity will also come. Because these men were persevering, they could be creative. If we decide to be persevering and persistent, creativity and originality will become a part of our personalities. And then we let ourselves down in front of God. We let ourselves down as helpless and as paralyzed, asking God to do whatever God thinks is best. It is likely the paralyzed man may first have wanted to walk and not have his sins forgiven. And yet he remains quiet. He does not speak. He does not tell God what God must do. And even though he is forgiven his sins First, before being healed physically, he accepts that as God's plan. There are times like this, when we cannot really understand God's plan, nor can we see how this is for our good. And yet, the truth is, the fact is, the reality is that God is in control and God knows what God is doing. So if God decides that God wants to forgive our sins before he can heal us physically, we must let God do that as the paralyzed man does it. And if we cooperate in this manner with God, if we reach out in this manner like the paralyzed man did with his openness, with his obedience, with his silence, 
and with his acceptance, then we will hear God tell us also, even in the midst of our frustration and our anxiety, I say to you, rise, take up your mat and walk. And we who are finding it so difficult now to move from one moment to the next, to move from one hour to the next, to move from one day to the next, will be joy, take up our mats and 